If you want to find out more about Microsoft Loop before it comes out, then you're in the right place. Today we're going to have a preview of Loop Components. So by the end of this video, you'll have a first look at everything that's live right now in Teams Preview, how it might all start to fit together, and how Loop Pages might start to come together as well. Got new videos on Teams and Microsoft 365 coming out every Tuesday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified every time a video comes out. I'm Gavin Jones, founder at MeTime, where we help people save time at work to do more of the things they love. A former transformation manager at a Fortune 500 company, and I help other companies save time at work using Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Teams. If you want to find out more about working together, then stick around until the end for some details about how we might be able to do that. And before we start, if you've never heard of Microsoft Loop, then watch this video first to find out all about it in this one we're going to be diving straight in. So without further ado, let's do exactly that. Okay, so here we are in Teams and we're in Teams Preview. I don't think this is available in general release just now. And Loop Components uh, right now in Preview is only available in chat. But for right now, I've just got a meeting that I had with myself. Loop Components will work within internal meetings as well, as long as everyone's on Preview. So first thing to note is that if you star a chat message, uh, and then try to do a loop component, which is this little button here. Um, it then says you can't do it. So you need an empty message to start. And if you click that, bizarrely, none of the templates that we went through in the last video, again, you can watch that here, are included. So all the things that were on Microsoft Ignite blog posts, like the, the agenda, uh, seemingly don't pop up as a starting component, but we'll have a, a look at how you can get some of those. Uh, in a sec. So we need to choose one of these. Paragraphs a bit odd. Uh, also a bit odd is that they've kept these lists which look very similar to if you do the pop-up we've still got tables, uh, bulleted lists and things there. Uh, these aren't live components um, so no one else can edit these. I can't, once I click send, I can't edit this table. Um, because it's not a live component. So that's the difference between some of the functions of a, you know, a larger message with some formatting versus a live component. And like I said in the last video, it's going to get quite confusing for normal people until Microsoft have uh, fully fledged this idea. But obviously we're still in preview. We're going to pick one of these. So we'll pick a bulleted list, say. You can see it starts syncing, pops them up and still got a little more way to go before it's fully done. And by default, everyone in the organization could see that loop component if they had a link to it. And we'll go through that right now. Because obviously it only works in chat right now. We're only chatting with myself. So you'd assume that only the people in chat could see that loop component. And that's one of the options you've got in the link settings. So we'll just start this up as test list and we can type some stuff in there and nothing too amazing about that so far you might think once you come down a bit then it says type slash to insert and that's where it gets a little more interesting but before we click on that well notice that this is a live list it says draft it's draft because i've not sent it yet so unlike any other chat where obviously you could recall your own chat and edit it but if you had a table in it um you couldn't do that sort of live. A loop component, once we send it, it's always in sync wherever it is. Obviously it's only in chat right now, but then it changes from draft and then you get an external link to it. And you can see I can still update this list live even after the message has been sort of sent. And it's now not a new message anymore. It's sort of a loop component that's living in chat. So if I click this test list one here, and we'll open that in a browser, and it jumps us out into OneDrive. So if I click there, it's saving in my Microsoft Teams chat folder, uh, and it's a test one dot fluid file. And this is then what the loop page is probably going to look a little bit like when the loop workspaces app comes out later. So if I put these two side by side, then you can see as I'm typing in my OneDrive, I get a little icon here that someone else is editing it. And you can see it's in dead on real time. Obviously, it's <laughs> it's just me that's doing it, but it is going up to the cloud and back down through my uh, Wi-Fi to do that. And I can edit there on Teams, and it updates my OneDrive, and I can edit here 
and it updates there. So whoever, obviously if there's multiple people in the chat all editing it together, it's pretty much gonna be real time. So we had a cut down list, didn't we, when we started to start something off and none of those things were the ones that Microsoft showed off in their demo. Once we've got a live component going though, we can type slash to insert and then we get loads more stuff and some of the ones that Microsoft talked about, one being agenda. So we can at mention a person, I'm the only person in my tenant because I use it for training, everyone else in the tenant is a guest. So we can at mention myself and then you can see that that's going to pop up in Teams. If that was a different person that had done the at mention, I would get notified that there'd been an at mention there. A bit like Wiki, if you at mention yourself, you don't get notified, but someone else at mentioned you, then uh, that would appear in there. Uh, you might have some questions about, is this the same as Wiki? And we just don't know yet. It would be great if Microsoft just got rid of Wiki and replaced it with Loop, but they have not announced that yet. That's just my on my wish list. So let's have a look at some of the other things we can incorporate. So we can put a date in and it does this like a little seven days left, which is great. And you might think, well, why do you want to do that? But if you think about this as being incorporated into OneNote, then having sort of a live date. Uh, and then if you think more like what Notion does, where if you've got any sort of, I suppose this, I don't know what to call it, this is a loop component, but it's like a component within a component uh, or within a page, I guess, as, as this is, you can then link that through like a relational database to show up anywhere else. So you could then have a page that just say, shows me everything that's due, that's marked the Thursday, the 18th of November, say. Again, I don't know if that's planned from Microsoft, but that's the sort of thing you, that you could probably do in Notion. Some other things that we could insert are the task list, which looks great. Again, it's gonna update live where it, whichever one we do it in. We can put a task, so why is this not in to do? Which is a great question. Assign that to myself. You still have to type an at, even though it knows it's an assigned to column. And again, we can pick a date and it shows us how many days is left. Again, we can add another task. We can do that on either Teams chat or into the sort of one note substitute page as it is at the moment and we'll assign myself again obviously if you're in teams the loop page is only going to fit in that window uh, at the moment it doesn't seem like you can pop that out uh, unless obviously you click on that link and you'll jump out into the browser and if we want to do something else we'll just jump down and again we can still once we've got a live component going you can add other components into that same sort of page in Teams or into the into the OneDrive. So you can put an image in there and uh, we'll put the Microsoft Loop logo. That looks pretty cool. And again, you can see that in either, either one. And then checklist, but as a list, number list, obviously all pretty similar. Comment is just, I think, shows up as a comment. I don't think that's an app mention or even a modern comment as Microsoft would call it in their sort of office apps. So I think that's just like a note about who's made that comment. Comment here, it doesn't seem to notify you once a comment's done and you can't like put a comment for someone else. I wonder if you could put a comment and then that mention. Yeah, so I think comments just marking that it's not part of your, not updating the text. Say if you're working on a list together, you could then add a comment to say something and then obviously that's, uh, clear to the other people that that's not actually meant to be in that list. It's just it's like a comment about the list and you could remove the comment once, once someone's done it. So uh, agenda is interesting because it's just the same as a, a checklist, but just puts agenda at the top. So good agenda, start on time, keep on time, finish on time, great agenda. Okay, and then we'll do a checklist is the same as agenda, but it just doesn't put agenda at the top. So same thing, we'll have a checklist and then we can tick that off. Again, whichever one we tick, it's gonna update in real time. But again, that's the same as the agenda, just without agenda at the top. So not sure why we need both of those things, to be honest. And that's about it really. So obviously, like I've shown, you can have checklist, bulleted list, number list, within just a normal chat. So we could have a bullet list there, but this one's gonna be something that you could work on live together. So hopefully they'll align uh, those functionalities so people don't get confused about whether they've inserted a bulleted list that people can edit, a bulleted list that people can't edit, that would be great. But that's just a quick look at how a page might show up right now in Microsoft Loop. This is in preview. After uh, once the Loop app comes out, there'll be pages that you can link to other pages and make it sort of uh, all flow together like Notion. And for right now, that's how it shows up in Teams. 
and shows up in your OneDrive. If you're getting confused about all the stuff in Microsoft 365, then make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon because we've got new videos coming out every Tuesday on Microsoft 365. In my day job, I help people save time at work. So if you are not saved a significant portion of time per person per week yet from moving everything to Microsoft 365, then I can probably help because that's what I do. So make sure you click one of the links in the description below if you're interested in connecting to find out more. Before we leave, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up because it helps the algorithm. And if you really liked it, consider buying me a beer using the link in the description below. It really helps support the channel and keep free content coming out on YouTube. But thanks for watching so far and we'll see you in the next video.